Joining us now is Jabari Bisport. He is a Green Party and Socialist uh, DSA candidate mm-hmm. for City Council in Brooklyn, New York. His family has been in Prospect Heights for 60 years. Jabari, why are you running? How is it going? And for also, you know, great as always to be hanging out with you, man. Uh, thanks, Michael. Um, great to have me on the show. Great to be here. Um, really appreciate the, the work you do. Um, why I'm running, I essentially got tired of uh, protesting. I have engaged in politics as a political um, activist and um, political theater maker for the past 10 years, uh, using site-specific theater and um, working with community boards to fight gentrification um, throughout New York City, uh, working with the Black Lives, Ladder, uh, Black Lives Matter movement, um, fighting uh, for the climate, fighting for so many issues. And last year got very... Um, really enthusiastic about electoral politics via the Bernie Sanders campaign. And, you know, after Trump, the idiot, won and right. uh, launched America into this dark path, right. I was out there marching uh, through the rain November 9th uh, last year and felt like it wasn't enough to just be marching anymore. So I thought I would run for office. So, and, and what, I mean, I think, you know, there's, there's debate about this stuff on a national mm-hmm. level, and, and you and I might have different views of it, but I think on a local level, um, there's a really compelling case to be made for, like, why shouldn't New York City be a two-party city? And let's make that second party a socialist, social justice-oriented party. Mm-hmm. What was the decision behind, instead of kind of going and doing what Bernie did, which is where you mm-hmm. kind of got, you know, cut your teeth, you went from a volunteer to actually a, a position on the campaign in the New York office, New, or in, in Bronx, in the Bronx, mm-hmm. right? Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, excuse yeah. me. So... What but what made you decide to step outside, not not try to take it inside the democratic machinery, but do it as a socialist and as a green? Uh, I, I don't trust the democratic machinery. I, I watched them kind of crush the Bernie Sanders campaign, mobilize um, against him, uh, use in the um, the insiders of the the super delegates and um, party elites in order to effectively crush any opposition he could muster. I mean, he still managed to get 13 million votes, incredibly impressive. But ultimately, uh, they used everything they could to um, throw him under the bus. And I, I, you know, looked and saw them crushing other progressive movements throughout, you know, the past several decades and figured I would match, I would much rather be in my own uh, party. And I would much rather um, go with a party that aligns with my values more so, which is the Green Party. So when, when you saw that, and give people a, is that the elevator? That's the elevator. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm sorry, Rumble. everybody. That's incredible. <laughs> we have the elevator behind us in the That's studio. That's new today. There's something up with that There's elevator definitely, today. Like, I don't want to get in that elevator. It <laughs> usually usually makes no noise. Now it sounds like something is happening, but I apologize uh, if you're listening. To... <laughs> That's so it's intense, coming. man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, no, but do you think... Mm-hmm. I want to get like specific mm-hmm. about this because I think that, you know, like... Even the Democrats as a party, it's mm-hmm. made up of so many different things. But when we, you know, there's different state parties, different local mm-hmm. parties, there's national, there's different factions. But I think, like, for people to get a sense outside of New York, it's a really easy move for, and I want you to talk specifically about your race mm-hmm. and who you're running against. It's a really easy move outside to, to signify, like, if you're a New York City politician, you know, you hate Trump. Mm-hmm. You are, you know, kind of liberal. Maybe you'll even kind of like make sure to show up at an anti-war rally. There's a lot of ways of signifying um, what you might represent. Um, even, and, you know, I think Bill de Blasio is a little kind of a complicated figure, but he fits in this too in some ways for sure. But where it really comes down to in the city, it seems to me, and I'm simplifying, but it's like, where do you stand on housing, mm-hmm. gentrification? What are your everybody has rhetoric about community police relations, but what's your real policy on race and policing? And then three schools, right? So, you know, pick any of those you want, but just like give an example of how like nationally people might go, oh, New York, that's super liberal. I mean, even some people think Andrew Cuomo is liberal, <laughs> which is mind blowing. <laughs> So yeah. how does that kind of play out, and, and and how are you inserting yourself with, like, the actual test of what a left agenda is here, and, and how does that look like green socialism? Uh, yeah, um, great question. I mean, it, it is easy to uh, 
to just you know be the be part of the resistance and uh, pass right. that off as as being enough um, right. to uh, to lead us out of the political quagmire that we're in right now. But a law a hard line I can tend to draw when people ask me these questions about how I differentiate or what exactly the ideological difference is, is that um, there are progressive Democrats and then there are socialists. And the um, the difference I see is that a progressive Democrat will fight for more affordable housing, but I as a socialist want all the land in this city to be publicly and democratically managed. Um, a progressive Democrat may, you know, argue for the right to no act um, or some more body cameras. I, as a socialist, would like to abolish the police and replace them with a community-led crime prevention force. Um, on education, uh, I'm about local control local control and fighting for elected uh, school boards, um, which we should return to. Uh, so it's a lot of things uh, that just, you know, go further. Um, some of them sound radical. I have the, um, the, the nuts and bolts to, to back them up. Um, so that's, I mean, those yeah, are the you do, you have, you definitely, if you go to your website and we'll have a link to it, obviously there's in-depth kind of policy explanations, but are you finding when you're out campaigning with people, I know that the district that you and mm -hmm. I live in and I endorse Jabari. Nice. Not yeah. I mean, we're hanging on that. The reason <laughs> was, was because what's her name? The woman you're running against? Uh, oh, the incumbent? Yeah, what's Lori her? Cumbo. Yeah. yeah, Lori Cumbo won't come in the studio. So, oh, yeah, you got, you got the endorsement by default. Nice. But no, I'm just, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. But seriously, I'm, I'm really excited about the campaign. I'm really eager to help you make a serious dent. And I think that, you know, but do, do you find that when you're talking, that, that in our neighborhood, there's like a very, I think we have the highest concentration of DSA members in yeah. the city, right? In, so, in the country, probably. In the country, <laughs> yeah. probably, right? Yeah. So there is like this contingency in, of, of kind of people really open to this. But when you go out and you campaign across like just kind of broader sort of demographics of age and political background, do you think that like when, when you say this stuff to people, I would imagine some reaction is, oh, my God, that's crazy. That's out of the loop. That's out of bounds. The other people start to get, like, almost a little bit, like, happy. Like, whoa, you're actually injecting something here that's new. And all of a sudden, I get to apply my imagination and my thinking again to politics versus it just being another kind of, like, limited brand exercise. It's a... Uh well, the thing is, you know, it's mixed messaging because you have to meet people where they are. So, right. um, you know, there are some far left like political junkies like you, like uh, you know, like you in the district. Obviously, you live there. Um, that I don't really curious. care about Paul. I'm just, just a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, they'll ask a question like what you just asked, like, well, why aren't you running as a Dem? What's the actual difference? And I can right. get to the nuts and bolts of saying progressivism versus socialism. Right. Other people, you just meet them where they are, and maybe it's just they're they just they don't understand why their rent keeps going up. And I can talk to them about why we need um, reform on affordable housing or a way to rain in the landlords better um so you know i don't go up to every single person saying kill I'm, I'm a, kill yeah. kill yeah. my landlord Did you ever do that the old eddie right. murphy bit i don't know what you're oh, talking man. about oh man dude saturday Night live scholarship <laughs> here i know i gotta watch yeah, that one no. um, yeah. no, it probably you shouldn't <laughs> yeah that wouldn't work for the campaign Let's reenact it for <laughs> so do, but do you think this mm -hmm. so it's but do people like so if you're meeting them where they are, like I guess, like intuitively, it makes sense, right? Cause, like, this, Intuitive it makes sense because socialism high. is about the people. I mean, it's about society. I mean, it's, it's inside the word. So it's about like getting more local control and more democratic processes, so that people in these communities can have a better say in, in, in how their government is functioning. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.